Blake, we finally made it on air, only about 45 minutes late, but we are here broadcasting from Tazadora in Millvale for the third annual Yuletide Tour. And as you know, if you've listened to the show, I'm a, I'm a Christmas skeptic. I'm one of the people who hates the, the crap that goes on at Christmas. I hate the gifts. I hate the, the busyness. I hate all of that stuff in, in the corporate setting. But then there's also the other side of Christmas, which, which I often forget about. And, and I'm thinking of the Christmas garage. What is the Christmas garage? The Christmas garage is a garage that we had Christmas dinner in for multiple years in a row at the Crawford household because we had so many people in the extended family that would come to meet for Christmas that we couldn't fit inside the house. So we had this giant garage. We moved all the cars out. We put down a giant carpet, put up a tree, and we literally ate Christmas in the garage. And it was really, really, really nice, actually. We had about 50 people there. And it's that sense of community and that sense of family, which is the positive side of Christmas, the side of Christmas that isn't a bunch of people tearing down the door at Walmart and trampling an old man to death so they can get the latest trinket, I don't know, whatever, whatever the kids are into nowadays, knickknacks, right? Kids are into knickknacks. I am Brian Crawford. This is the River's Edge Radio Network at riversedgepgh.com, Pittsburgh's voice for local music. We are broadcasting live at Tassadora, and I had a really, really good coffee, but we were struggling with the internet, and I've managed to actually completely drink it all beforehand, but, but that's okay. I'm here after work, and the coffee is keeping me awake and keeping me energized and ready to go. I am here with Sheena Carroll, who is my co-host Hello. for the day. She is a guest co-host, and she is also a member of the Milvo Library. You're, uh, you work there as well, so really into the community. And she is celebrating and taking part in this year's Yuletide Tour as well, which is fantastic. You've got all of these local businesses all open. There's a shop crawl where you can shop the local businesses, which is just such a completely different environment than what you're going to get at the big box retail stores, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the past two weeks have been really cool in Millvale. Like last last week, we had the holiday drink tour, and you don't normally like go to like Millvale Library and think like, oh, this is a place where I'm going to get cider and a gift for my kid's stocking. But like, that's this is the kind of place that Millvale is. In the past two weeks, we've been we've been like a little little hub. Yeah, it's really a, an awesome town. And I, I really personally enjoy the, the small businesses that we have here. One of the things that's interesting about Millvale is that there's such a wide variety of small businesses. It's not like a main street where you see replications of the same business over and over again. We've got a bird, sh- bird store, a candy store, a cafe, a tea place, and a coffee place, and then a bunch of unique bars and and all sorts of other, uh, a hobby shop, all right within walking distance of one another. And it's kind of cool, and it's so different than what I was used to growing up, where you literally had knick-knack stores one after another, and and it's it's cool. It's cool to have that diversity, and I feel like most small towns don't have that. Yeah, and Millville is really special in that it's just so, like, it's just so small. Like, we have all all of this in, like, 0.68 square miles. Um, but yeah, like from from the library, I can walk to the record store. I can yeah, buy that's something for one, my the, non-existent the bird, store. or go get Gundam kits down the street. Like, or just got my hair done down the street yesterday. It's Salon Twenty Two. Like, there's just, there's just a little bit of everything here. It's Salon cool. Twenty Two. Talk about Lisa Love putting together this entire Yuletide tour, which is just amazing. She and uh, her and the Business Association of Millville put together such a great event every year. And we're going to get more into that event, including a public art installation that is going on this evening right next door at Gap Park. That's one of the reasons why we came out here to Tazadora is to is to, to showcase this art installation which is going on right next door. It's really awesome. And it stretches all the way from the riverfront and, and crosses its way all the way through Millvale right to Gap Park. And I thought it was just a this blue line that was trying to bring people into town, but apparently there's so much more, including a light display and a and there's music there as well, or sound as well. So you gotta come by and that's gonna be this evening at five fifteen, right here at Gap Park. And then of course the Yule Tide Tour, which we're gonna get more into later in the program. And also we're gonna have Anne, who is the and Tarantino, who is the artist that put together this whole 
public art project. But because we've kept him so long, and he's been a good sport, and he's here, and he's got family who are roaming Millvale, enjoying all of the great deals, all of the cool stores, all of the, the fun, the blue line, and everything else. Well, he has been sitting here patiently waiting and waiting and waiting. We have Justin of Android, who has a show tomorrow night at Club Cafe, 7.30, correct? That is correct. So tell me about this show. Well, so this is our debut album release party. And so we are completely psyched about this. We've been, we started work on this album actually about a year and a half ago. And so finally we get to uh, release it to Pittsburgh, to the world, to you know, anybody who's interested. And we've got a couple of great acts playing along, uh, along with us. Uh, leaders of the Shift who are from New York City actually featuring John Shannon, uh, their guitarist and lead vocalist, who's actually from Pittsburgh, uh, although they're a New York band, and Glowface, who's a local electronic musician um, who just you know amazes me every time I get to hear him play. So we're so glad that they're on the bill with us. And we've got great special guests performing with us as well. Uh, Kiki Brown from the Buckle Downs, uh, Clo uh, Vice, and let's see, we got Rick Matt and J.D. Chasen, who are a couple talented horn players who play in the steel town horns and john shannon from leaders of the shift will be performing a, a couple of songs with us and these well. special guests are they just going to be coming in with your songs is that how that's going to work yeah they're going to come up and uh each of them are going to do uh two or three or four songs with us as part of our set so tell me so. about your band about android it was great mm -hmm. to get the pub the press release through my email so i was really excited to hear about that and mm -hmm. and work to get you guys involved with the river's edge mm -hmm. so tell me about your band you've been working on this project for a year but how long have you guys been together as a group sure well yeah so as i said this is our debut album so we're, we're not much older than that we're about uh about two years old this okay band. and you know uh we try to create a very original sound so then when i have to describe what we are to people it gets uh difficult to uh, put a label on it gets more uh, creative but, exactly and more fun right so when needed you know we you know we categorize ourselves as indie electronic pop but uh again hate the label uh, art or music. So yeah, that, that's one thing. I mean, right. genres do, I mean, it does make it easier for people to understand, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, you don't necessarily have to fit into a specific genre. You don't have to be pigeonholed. You can be just an artist and whatever you, whatever fits you is what fits you. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And so anyway, we're, we're a four piece band. I, I play keyboards. Uh, Jocelyn Rent is our vocalist. Uh, Talent, very talented vocalist. She sang in a band called Omega Love that uh, you know, did pretty well. You know, several years ago. We're all, you know we're all getting a little old here. You know, um, and uh, our drummer is named Andrew Kirk. Also, a great guy, very talented drummer. And Steve Palco is our bass player. Uh, and actually, he plays bass and synth bass. So we got a very electronic sound. You know, a lot of times he's playing synthesizers. Uh, I play synthesizers and uh, along with my electric piano. And, uh, so that you know, instrumentation-wise, that's that completes the band. Uh, what else? <laughs> did, uh, what else do I need to tell you about us? Um, <laughs> tell me about the show. So you, you sure. well, show me about the tell me about the the release in general. You've been working on this for a year. Mm -hmm. How excited are you to to be able to share this with people? Because I know when I started the network, mm -hmm. it was kind of frustrating for a while because mm -hmm. I well, it's a little bit different with you guys, I would imagine, because. You could still go out and perform, but before the network launched, I wasn't able to go out and perform. Mm -hmm. I was kind of muted until I got the infrastructure in place. And I just remember after several months of building the website, getting the technology together, getting the equipment and everything else, mm -hmm. when I finally was able to launch, it was just so exciting to be able to get that out there. Mm -hmm. and, and I imagine you probably, Sheena, experienced some of that excitement as well with your writings, because Sheena is a writer as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, even, like, well, like with my poetry and, like, building things up and, like, getting, like, this past year, I think is the most published, like, I've ever been. But, like, yeah, the whole process is usually, like, the, the writing process and the editing process and then the, like, wait six to nine months to hear a response process. So, yeah, no, it's always satisfying to hear anything back. Definitely. So tell me about your, your, do you experience a lot of those same things? Right. No, absolutely. So even though we're able to perform, I mean, it's, it's certainly something else to have an album and, you know, it, and there's a lot that we can express on an album that we, you know, we can't do in a live performance, you know, so we, you know, 
Um, as I said, we started a year and a half ago. And then the other thing is, you know, we, we finished it. I mean, this album was uh, printed, ready to go in July. Uh, but, you know, the great venues in Pittsburgh, a lot of times they're booked pretty far in advance. And that we have a little interesting story. I mean, we, we booked our album release originally at James Street. Oh, uh, Gastro wow. Pub, yeah. right? And uh, you know, most people familiar with what's happening in the music scene know the news that uh, they unfortunately had to close down, and so then we had to switch dates. And uh, luckily, Club Cafe had an opening for us uh, tomorrow. But yeah, you know, so it's a long process, and you know, we we do get to perform our music, but we've got a lot of stuff on this on this record that you're not going to hear, you know, at, at our live performance. How lucky is that that they had that date available? For you guys right it is lucky yeah our, our original date was in december anyway so yeah it, it, it things just worked out you know really nicely for us and i, I really appreciate uh, opus one uh, dave romano there really working with us to get this thing happening so yeah it all worked out in the end very cool yeah so mm-hmm. that's going to be great so it sounds like it's going to be a very good show now what steps did you take it to get the lineup that you did what were some of the thoughts that went behind your your guys process whenever you were putting together this lineup sure first of all you know there's so much local talent and there's so you know so many musicians and bands that we just love and that we've played with uh you know at other you know festivals and, and shows in pittsburgh and uh, you know we've always really liked leaders of the shift and you know and maybe i should also say you know our sound is is really it's always different from all the bands we play with so it's hard to find a, a good match yeah um and none of the other bands and leaders of the shift they're not the same as us and, and nobody else on the bill is but you know we've always really liked them i actually used to be called the shift now they're leaders of the shift and you know we're real glad that they're able to do this that you know they're the drummer and the bassist are coming all the way for the, from new york for this yeah that's pretty cool yeah and we've done a couple events with them before and glow phase there he's an old friend uh his real name is joe rusnak and we've done events with him before as well and you know he's just always a great match and every time we play a show with him it it's it's always a good thing it's always a great night so um so that wasn't a hard decision to get him on it and yeah and special guests you know similar thing they're they're all people that we've known for a while and just great musicians from town you know from around town and uh just was an easy decision to get them on it as well so what's next for you guys after you get through this party what's the next mm-hmm. step you, you take as a musician that's a great question one would be sleep yeah <laughs> that's, what's that's, that right right what's exactly sleep? i've never heard of that right so that that's the first step uh, typically what bands do at this point is you know you got the cd out and you'll tour around and, and and try to you know sell some of these things that you spend all this money and time on uh so we're yeah we're gonna try to do some shows we we're not going to do a very busy tour like a lot of these bands we, uh three of us have kids you know so we're all you know we're all juggling a gazillion things uh but yeah we're, we're going to plan to continue to perform and and maybe uh you know maybe take it to new york and some different places like that and uh you know hopefully uh get uh in contact with more uh, radio and local media like this and, mm-hmm. and do some more similar events and uh i know the city paper has us on mp3 monday which is uh, nice. which will be the, the day Very after cool. sunday yeah they'll put, be playing one of our tracks on their website so uh look for that and yeah, we're just going to continue. We, we've we got a bunch of original music that's not even on this album, you know, that we've made, <clears throat> excuse me, that we've been performing, you know, since we started recording the album. So, you know. Will we any of that start. make its way into the party tomorrow? Night? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me again. So you'll hear some of the music from the album, but you'll hear some other music as well. And you can start gearing up for our next release, you know, which in who knows when but af- yeah. after we get some sleep and af- you know i'm sure there's a lot of fundraising that goes into that as well it Correct. all right it all costs money um you know playing our shows uh helps us raise some money for that we never did any of the um you know the the online fundraising campaigns that a lot of these bands do and you know nothing against that you know but um we just chose to do it our own way you know by um you know just by saving what we can through shows it um you know, I also want to thank, I, I didn't get an opportunity or forgot to mention it yet, but you know, we recorded the album at Red Cayman Studios uh, down near Duquesne University with uh, Jesse Niles as our uh, engineer and producer. Just want to give a real you know, special shout out and thanks to him because it wouldn't happen if it weren't for him. 
and Keith Quinn, the assistant engineer there, and um, and also Joe Rusnak, Low Phase, gave us a lot of great advice throughout the process too. So just want to make sure I get my shout out to them before I forget. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, yeah. That's it's important to recognize people because really there's so many there's so much opportunity here in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, if you're not in the music scene, you really don't realize how many steps it takes to get through a process like this, how many people are involved, and mm-hmm. how many opportunities there are in Pittsburgh. I know we have an entire list of people that we refer out if somebody wants uh, to be wants to take that next step to get their mm-hmm. music on on record or, or things like that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's great that there are so many options here in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. And there, yeah, and I know there's a great studio right here as well, right? right? Uh, Mr. Small's. And um, yeah, Pittsburgh's full of full of, you know great musical facilities and venues. Well, we can always use more venues, of course. Yeah. But um, you know, you know, but and this this show right here, you know, I'm glad I'm doing this because one of the things is you know uh, you're helping us get get our um, our album release out to uh, a newer audience. But also, this is on my Facebook page and the Android a- Android Facebook page. So hopefully we can share River's Edge with a, yeah, a large new audience because this is a great thing you guys are doing here, and I'm I'm excited to tell a lot of my. I think it's important, and I think yeah. that a lot of like the old school radio stations have kind of missed a golden opportunity to mm-hmm. really expand their their libraries and their mm-hmm. databases and and really create a much better product. And I'm, I'm glad that they don't because it allows <laughs> me to do it. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't say I'm glad that they don't because that then the music isn't getting out there as quickly as it could, but I am glad that it's given us the opportunity to kind of fill that void and create the, the river's edge and mm-hmm. put a focus on local music. Because one thing I do love is I love listening to the station because you're getting so many, you're, you're hearing so much different music that you've never heard before. And even myself, I, you know, I put the songs on the network, but then you kind of forget about it for a while. You come back and you're like, wow, that band's really, really great. Who is that? And you can look it up. Mm-hmm. And through our website, you can purchase people's music and things like that. So it creates definitely a lot of opportunity. Absolutely. And again, this is a city with so much talent, you know, so much great music out there. And so all I can say is, you know, local bands, local artists, hit up this guy, hit up Brian Crawford, River's Edge, Pittsburgh. Music enthusiasts, turn to, you know, go River's Edge, Pittsburgh.com, right? River's, River's Edge, PGH.com. There yeah. you go. There you go. Hit it up. You, you can you hear all the local music there, and maybe you'll hear th- some things that you like that you can go to a show. You know, after you hear, after you familiarize yourself with some of this music. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, that is Justin of Android, and he is going to be performing tomorrow night, seven thirty at Club Cafe. You're welcome to stick around for the rest of the show if you want to, but I, I know, do know you have family who are running around. Yeah, so. I, I got to go track them down. And well, we got you out of here. Despite everything, we got you out of here three minutes after the end of the the show, as to when it was supposed to end. So, mm-hmm. so we did pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Everything worked out in the end. All right, okay. very good. That is Justin. You can see him and all of Android tomorrow night, 7.30, Club Cafe. You do not want to miss it. It's going to be a great time. Thank you so much, Justin. It's been and a pleasure. Thank look you. Look forward to uh, checking everything out. So. Excellent. Thanks. All right, that is Justin. So we're going to move right along here. Today is the Yuletide Tour here in Millville. So we've got activities going on right now all over town. I know Tazadora opened up at 7 in the morning, and they were all ready. I saw a post from one of the baristas here at Tazadora who was very excited and very enthusiastic about today's event, the Yuletide Tour. So I know people all over town are excited about it, and uh, I know I am as well. I'm excited to see... I'm I'm excited to... It sounds stupid. I'm excited to see Santa light the tree (laughs) because it's just so... It's just so small town in a good way. And... I, what I like about the Yuletide tour is it's very much like a carnival in some ways where you have different types of things going on all at the same time. So where I grew up back home, they had a light up night parade and it was a huge thing. They had like 10,000 people that would come down to watch this parade. And I don't think I've ever seen that many people in that town before or, or after at any, at any year. In any year, it was the light up night was the big thing. There's no other event that they have in my hometown of, of Irwin that was as big. But again, it was just the parade. You came down for the parade, and then it was done. Whereas this is all day. You've got the public art 
display that is going to be finally available to the public for people to enjoy, which I'm very excited about that. You've got the Santa lighting the tree. You've got the different businesses. You've got the kids party up at the Millville Community Center. So there are so many different things to do. And I think that kind of is unique in the sense that it's not so, I guess, so singularly focused. Well, that was so cool because you just get that small town experience, but you're so close to the city that there's there's just like a lot more going on. Like this is going to be my first Yuletide tour, so like I don't know what to expect. But I was at Millville Days in September, and that was also my first Millville Days, and that was that was a special event. That was that was pretty wild. Yeah, um, Millville Days is great. And a lot of people give it flack because you could drink on the streets, but I do love the fact that you can drink on the streets. <laughs> so. Yeah, no. Well, also, like, it's one of those things where it starts with a parade, but then it just goes all day, and there's just people and performances and just a, a ton. Like, there's just a ton to offer, and it's just not like, a, oh, we're just going to, like, hang out, look at, the, look at the crowds, and then go to a bar. Like... Well, you can do that. Yeah. There are lots of crowds. They have wrestling at Millville Days. They've got all sorts of like interesting things to do, and there definitely is a, a bar element to it. That's that's one of the cool things about it is you can bring your drink out onto the street. But you're right. There are other things to do. There are the carnival games for the kids and things like that. So there are a lot of different aspects to Millville Days, and, I, and that's kind of... Uh, Yuletide Tour is kind of similar to that in the, in the fact that there are so many different things going on and so many different things that you can do mm -hmm. at the event. So, but we do have some weird news stories. Uh, I know, were, were you able to bring a weird news story to the table? Um, well, I did read something yesterday um, about everyone's favorite Canadian leader, Justin Trudeau. All right, well, let's play the music, and then we'll, uh, we'll get into that. We've got okay. the weird news right now here on The River's Edge. We are Pittsburgh's number one weapon against the Mon Monster. It's a creature that lives in the river here in Pittsburgh, and it threatens the entire city with total destruction. Today, it has taken its aim on the Yuletide tour. It hates Christmas. It hates the holidays. It hates Hanukkah. It hates all of it. It wants people to be miserable, and it really hates small business. So it has its eyes on Millville. It's ready to wreak havoc. And the only thing that could stop it is not one, not two, but three weird stories to entertain the creature and keep it at rest. You have a story for us. Yes. <laughs> so what is your story? Well, um, just reading, reading a little bit yesterday, and this is really bad. I don't remember if, Can Canada, if Canada has a president or a prime minister. They have a prime minister, yes. Yes, but he is very well known for being considered a very pretty man and the, he has a calendar out it's called my canadian boyfriend and you just have 12 months of just fine fine trudeau picks did he come up with this calendar or did someone else come up with it on his behalf i don't know but he doesn't seem to mind that just, just seems kinda very owns it. that's kind of odd as a leader of a country don't you think like it's a weird thing to do I know all of you out there are looking for the Donald Trump <laughs> calendar, right? <laughs> and all of his sexy poses. Well, Everybody yeah, out there. That's another thing. Like, yeah, like Trudeau's just got this like following. It doesn't really matter what's going on in Canada right now or what he's doing. It's just like he's so young and cute. Like, I'm not. You're not going to see a my Russian boyfriend. Just, yeah, you know, he, Putin on horses. He's been going around apologizing for all sorts of interesting things, which is is not a bad thing. He's he's been kind of so. You know, we have Donald Trump in this country who won't apologize for anything. And then you've got Trudeau, who's actually going out and making apologies on behalf of the country for wrongs that the country is, has committed to different people who are from Canada, whether they were indigenous to Canada, or I know recently he came out and apologized to the, uh, the gay community, the, the bisexual community, all of the, you know, the, the queer uh, community with their treatment by the government in Canada. So he's been kind of going on this apology tour trying to, I guess, build some bridges where they had been burned by past That's governments. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. 
No, that's a it's a great move. I don't know anything about like any other like actions or policies that he's working on. It's just kind of a, like an image thing. Yeah, he, I, I I hear a lot about what he does because I read a lot of international news. He's been kind of trying to. He's more of a globalist. I would well much more so than than Trump, for example, mm. and he's trying to get Canada in on that world scene and things like that. So that's kind of a lot of what he's been doing, at least on an international level. On a local level, I, I really don't pay that much attention to local Canadian politics, but until something juicy happens and then, <laughs> like him apologizing, that makes international news and you hear about that. So we do have that story. Uh, number two, there is a cat, and I thought of you specifically, Sheena, when I found this story. There is a cat who is famous now on social media. It's a cat that was banned from a library. So it says here, according to the Associated Press, a tabby named Max has been playing a game of cat and mouse with some Minnesota College librarians. The, uh, the feline has been sneaking into the college library in St. Paul when people open the door and, has been, and it's been scampering around bookshelves. So it's been ro- you know, roaming throughout the library and apparently someone created a social media page for this cat and now the cat is famous. Do you have any creatures roaming about the Millville library? Not in the library though. I wish we had a library cat. Though allergies and whatnot. But my my hometown Newcastle, they have like they have their library cat. I think like his name is like Stax or some very library related thing and he just hangs around and sleeps on books. But we do have like a lot of like, you know, like neighborhood cats. They like to hang out in the backyard. Really cute. There are a kitten. lot of cats that are roaming Millville. Not not as much as where I grew up, but there are still a significant number of cats. You can always find one running somewhere. Mm-hmm. And where I grew up, the the cats were everywhere, and they would actually come into the garages and they would go on top of people's cars and everything else. And it was crazy. We had all these alleys though, and they would roam up and down the alleys, gangs of cats. <laughs> Yeah, and it's hard to tell, like, if if a cat does have a home and it just doesn't like being indoors, or or if it's a, like a feral homeless cat. Like when I was growing up, like there was a cat that just like hung out on my porch every single day. So I just decided that it was my cat now, and it didn't seem to mind. I feel bad for these cats because it's getting colder out. Yeah. Today it was 28 this morning when I got off of work. And I know today's high, I believe, is in the 50s or something like that. So it's going to be a nice afternoon. But this morning, it was really cold. 28 is really cold. Mm -hmm. It could snow at 28 degrees. And you think about all these cats that are kind of roaming around in the cold. And you feel bad for them. You wonder, what do they do to keep warm? They can all come to my house. They can all go to your (laughs) house. So pretty soon, you will be like the cat lady. The cat cat queen. That's your goal. (laughs) So... That would be interesting. Maybe you could get, could you train the cats? There was a woman we talked about recently who, in a former weird news story, who had trained her cats, a team of cats, to basically be cat ninjas, and they were going in stealing from her neighbors. Do you think you could train a team of cats? Is that something you would yes, be interested in? Absolutely. So you want to train a, ke- a team of cats? A team of cats? What would you like- make your, your team of cats do? Oh, man. That's a good question. That just reminded me, though, like, you can do that with crows, too, because they're, like, they're really smart. So if they like you, they'll just start, like, giving you things. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, usually just, like, shiny stuff, because crows like shiny stuff. So just, like, this one girl was, like, feeding her, like, like a little girl was, like, feeding her neighborhood crows, and they liked her so much, they started, like, giving her, like, pennies, and, like, one day just gave her, like, a ring, like, that they found. And just, she doesn't need to know where it came from. I don't need to know where it came from. Just that it was very sweet of them to do that. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty... Pretty cool. I know, I'm thinking, like, if we can get this team of cats together and you could train them, maybe you could send them in as, like, an assassin squad (laughs) to take out the geese on the north side. The cutest assassin squad. Uh, The cutest assassin squad, yeah. Are you a fan of the geese? Um, eh. I was, um, I was at Allegheny Cemetery, like, a month ago. I was just, like, I had some downtime and it was a beautiful day. So I was, like, walking around the cemetery and there's, like, three, three hundred geese and just six times that amount of just geese poop everywhere. I was like, you know, this is a very beautiful, beautiful place, but can't, can't walk here. Can't walk now. Not with the <laughs> geese. Not with all of the geese poop everywhere. That is for sure. Third weird news story of the day. 
and this is actually, it was funny. I came in with this story, and I kind of had a different take on it coming into today's show. I ordered this bag, and it's sitting on the floor here for my iPad. And I was expected to get it yesterday, and it came from Amazon, and I didn't see it. And I was so angry. I'm like, oh, where is this bag? I need this bag. And I thought of this story where somebody who was delivering, he worked for Amazon, they were delivering a package, and they defecated on the front lawn of the person's home who they were delivering the package to. I don't have a lawn, but I do have a sidewalk. And I was thinking, man, I would be okay with someone defecating on the sidewalk if I got my package on time. Well, here it turns out my package was there on time. It was just in an obscure spot that I could not see. So, and poopless. And poopless. There was no poop. So I got my package without the poop on time. But of course, I didn't get it that night because I wasn't looking for it in that location. But where do you stand on the issue? Would you be okay with someone defecating on your property if you were to get your packages on time? Is that a trade-off that you're willing to make? No, that's kind of messed up. Like, let them have the time to go use a bathroom. Well, what if they don't ask and they just make a decision? <laughs> like, like, I'm sure this person didn't ask to use the bathroom and the person who was at the home was like, oh, no. Well, no, no not no, even no. like that. Like, just go to, like, a public place. Go to a gas station Maybe or something. Maybe that's like, their thing. I mean, if it's their thing, that's... Uh, I don't know how that really correlates to the, like... If they, if they do it, then I'll get my package on time. And not a, like, they do it and they do that. Would you be willing to sacrifice a few minutes for your package to come a little bit late for someone to be able to use a public restroom? Yes. You're willing to, uh, to make that sacrifice? Absolutely. That's big of you. <laughs> that's really nice of you. So, yeah, I, I would be willing to make the sacrifice. I think that's okay. But I, would, I do want it that day, though. I, I, like, certain things you need. So that's the thing. Like, I am a big believer in, like, local small-town shopping and I like the fact that you can go there and you don't have to wait for anything. Like, I waited two days for this backpack, and really, that's not a long time to wait at all. But I'm so impatient, and I want it now. I want it right away. What happened to the good old days? What good old days? Of waiting? I never had to wait. See, that's the thing. You never had to wait before because you would just go to the store and get it. Now everyone orders it online. Well, not like a, not everything's available in a store and that's not always easy to get like I don't know I order a lot of stuff on eBay instead of Amazon and I know I know it's a coin flip will I will I get it in a week will I get it in a month just don't get anything that I need right away See, I always need it right then like I'm one of those people I never am forward thinking in that regard I'm always getting something exactly when I need it see but I also don't like paying for shipping I don't either so. no like, the, the time wait is a sacrifice that I'm willing to make for that, too. Well, that's true. I will definitely do that to avoid paying shipping. I actually just had a fight with my cell phone provider, and it worked out in my favor. I said, I will not pay any activation fees, and I've spent hours on the phone fighting. But see, if I went to a small business here in Millville, and they were selling cell phones, I guarantee they would just waive the activation fee for me because they, they want my business, and they're, they've got good customer service. You're saying no. <laughs> no. You don't think they would waive the activation fee? Well, s well, my cell phone company did waive the fee, but it did take a lot of fighting, and, uh, and it was worth it in the end. See, I don't mind paying for something, but don't call it an activation fee. I guess call it like, if you come into the store, maybe call it a service fee. Like, I'm okay with paying a service fee. Okay, you're providing a service because I'm in the store. But when you call it an activation fee, you're basically saying, okay, you're giving us money simply because you're, you're buying a new phone. So you're giving us money for the opportunity to buy something new. Yeah. Well, no. I'm, well, I, don't, I don't like service fees. I don't like activation fees. Um, I like some things, but I don't like those. Um, but, like, I went, I, went to a, I went to a show at a big venue um, on the other side of the city a while back and, like, bought tickets at the door and was told the tickets were like $10. So I had $10 in cash exactly. And they were like, okay, well, that's a $3 service fee on top of that. But, but for what? <laughs> I was invited to a show recently. And this really was something that blew my mind. I've never seen this before, where there was a door price. And then there was a, a price for if you buy it in advance online. 
and the price to buy it in advance was like twice the price of the door. It's usually the opposite. It's usually the opposite. They usually want you to buy everything in advance, especially online, because then they don't have to pay to have somebody sit there. They don't have to pay for all that other crap. But no, this was like crazy. I mean, it was like $26 to get in at the door, and it was over $50 to get it online in advance. Mm. So, of course, I'm just going to you know buy it at the door, because why not? So... That's one thing that always kind of bothered me. And the other thing that bothered me is I once bought a ticket for an event where you had to pay. They they had the the service fee. They had the ticket price. And then you had the printed at home fee where you had to pay them for the privilege of saving that organization money. What? (laughs) Yes. The printed at home fee. And you pay to print it yourself too. Yeah. You pay for the ink. You pay for the paper. You're paying for the ticket, and now you're paying for a fee because they let you let them save money. I just not the go case to your here show, at the man. I not the case here at the Yuletide Tour. There are no tickets. You can walk yeah. around and you can explore all of the great sales. They've got discounts all over town. So not only do you not have to pay to come, but you'll actually save money in the process. And speaking of today and the Yuletide Tour, we have. Anne Tarantino, who is calling in right now. We have her on the phone. She is the one of the artists who was involved in the public art display here in Millville. Anne, how are you today? Hi, I'm well. Thanks for having me. How are you? Thank you. I'm well. Thanks for your patience as we figured out our internet situation here at Has a Door, which has oh, amazing sure coffee. They actually have really good internet, too. Like, we haven't had any issues once I was able to get it up and running. And the coffee tastes fantastic. I'm so thrilled to have a coffee place here in Millville because now I don't have to cross a bridge, which is amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> And we are right next to Gap Park here at Tazadora, which is where all of the, the blue lines that people are following, it's kind of like follow the, the little blue line instead of the yellow brick road, and you can follow the blue line right. into town right to Gap Park. And Anne, you were the artist who was selected to make all of this come together and that is going to be on display, and it's finally going to be available to the public tonight at Gap Park. So tell me a little bit about the project, and how did you come to Millville to, to make all of this happen? Sure. So I applied to a call for artists. This was probably about a year and a half ago, and it was for a temporary placemaking public art project um, co-sponsored um, and organized by the Office of Public Art and Neighborhood Allies. And they matched six artists, uh, one artist each per target community, and Millvale was one of those communities that was participating in the program. And I interviewed with some local folks um, from the MCDC, the Community Library, and the uh, Maslavanka uh, Mural um, Society, and was selected to, uh, you know, was matched with Millvale and invited to come in and generate a, a project um, for, for the community. So I spent several months coming to town, getting to know people, uh, reading about the history, talking with people about what was important to them and what they thought would be interesting, and settled on a concept of looking to the community's history with water and trying to connect up the two parts of town that are very water-centric, so looking at Riverfront Park and then Gap Park, which uh, goes right over Gertie's Run, so there's actually literally water right beneath your feet when you're standing in in Gap Park. Yeah, where uh, we used to be located with the River's Edge was inside of Millville Studios, and if you look at Millville Studios, there's those two... That's right, you're right there. We were, yeah, yeah, we've moved now to Mr. Small's. But if you're there in Millville Studios, you see that little office in the back corner. That's where we were located. And I know Gertie's Run yes, literally okay. ran right underneath our radio studio. So it's kind of interesting that the yes. water really is just literally running through the town. It's a little frightening at times when you think about the flooding problems that they've had. But uh, I know the Army Corps of Engineers has come in and worked on resolving a lot of those issues, but it really does have this connection to the river. And that's one of the things that drew me to Uh Millville as a resident myself was that connection to the Riverfront Trail, which can take you downtown or up through Etna. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. 
it's really yeah, that's a, a so great opportunity. Because that, that's something that really appealed to me, too. And I was struck when I first visited town um, as to how much of the community fabric and community history had to do with water, but also how there's somewhat of a disconnect between Riverfront Park and then the rest of town because you've got to pass through this big intersection and it's quite busy. And if you aren't from Millvale or if you don't know exactly where to go, you might kind of miss that connection. So I was interested in a very low-tech way to visualize the water that literally connects the two parts of town. And so that was the the function of the line. And then the idea with the piece that is going to be unveiled this evening in Gap Park, um, I don't want to give it away or tell too much about it, but, um, but the idea is that there's kind of a reward for people who follow the line all the way to the end. They get to the park and they have another experience that allows them to think about water in a different way. Are you able to explain that experience at all before tonight, or is this something that people have to come in and see for themselves? Uh, oh, sure. No, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can, I, I, yes, absolutely, I can speak about it. Um, it is a light and audio installation. Uh, I was very fortunate to collaborate with a terrific lighting designer, um, Ben Peoples Industries, and I developed a an audio piece, which is kind of a sound collage, like an audio collage of water from different contexts, and then a, um, a lighting installation that involves projections in various parts of the park of uh, textures of water. And so the idea is that you are in the park, it becomes visible at night because it is legible only as, as night falls and then throughout the night. And the idea is to create a calming kind of meditative experience um, for people who can feel like they're immersed in that water that we can't actually see when we're in Gap Park because it's beneath our feet. Yeah, and it's really pretty... It's a, I, I was able to get a sneak peek of everything together and I can say that it's definitely worth coming out tonight uh, to checking it out. It's, it's really exciting and I think it's kind of cool because it adds something so different to Gap Park and I don't think I've ever seen any other mm -hmm. public art displays quite like this in Pittsburgh. Am I wrong in thinking that? Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know that I could answer that definitively. I do think it's different from anything I personally have seen. Um, you know, part of the goal of the project, um, in addition to serving this kind of wayfinding function between the two sites, part of the goal is to animate Gap Park at night and to make it an inviting place that people might want to go and just kind of hang out, you know, to add something else to the conversation about what could happen there. So... Um, if that's unique in Pittsburgh or anywhere, I'll, I'll take it <laughs> yeah. because that was the goal of mine. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. And I like how you use the surroundings in Gap Park. You have to come, you guys, if you're listening, you have to come out tonight and check it out as we unveil it and, yes. and get that first opportunity. And that's going to be at 515 do. at Gap Park. But really, it's something to experience. Yep, and and I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying it's something to experience. That's one thing that I really like about this public art display that you've collaborated with and helped put together and, and spearheaded is that it's not just something that you go up and see. I mean, it's wonderful to be able to see a mural, and I love that, and, and it can add so much to a town. But with this, you're really experiencing the art in a way yeah. that you're not just coming and looking at it. You're really almost part of it. You're taking a journey with the art, and I think that's something that's really unique, and I think it's really, it really adds something special to Millville that's really becoming very much an art scene, whether it be through music at Mr. Small's or Panza Gallery with visual yes, art absolutely. or the, the coming Millville Studios. It's really becoming an art epicenter yes. in Pittsburgh. And that is a reason why I fell in love with the community. You know, I felt an instant connection to Millvale and all of the various community initiatives and the terrific people and the interest in arts and culture. So it was a really fantastic experience to work there. And I'm so glad that you experienced the uh, installation in Gap Park as kind of an immersive thing. Um, and I will just add about tonight that we will be there at 5.15. We'll be very briefly uh, introducing the project. I'll be introducing myself. Um, we'll be giving out 
vouchers for a free hot drink and a cookie from Taza <laughs> right next door. Which is where we're at and right then, now. And um, then the piece, the, um, that's right, of course. Yeah, you're broadcasting from there. Um, and then the piece will become progressively more visible and legible as it gets darker and darker. So I'm hoping that people will come back and visit over the course of the evening. Well, the nice thing is, is the park where Santa is lighting the tree tonight is so close to Gap Park, so you could easily yes. get back and forth, which is <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Have you done anything like this in your past? Well, not. That's a, yeah, no, that's a great question. I have done some shorter-term temporary projects that have looked at water and that have involved light in various ways. Um, this is my was my first opportunity to work with sound and uh, different in the sense that it is a longer-term project, so it's intended to be up for one to two years, and so that presented a new set of challenges and concerns and kind of a learning curve, but a very fun one, you know, to figure out um, Was how it a challenge you to generate to... something that could stand up. It's certainly a challenge, yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. What did you learn as you tried to put this together and you had to, to work with the sound and, the, and, and everything? Yes, great question. Um, you know, a couple things. I mean, one, um, this doesn't speak right to your question, but it's like a big kind of thing that I learned and take away is the importance of community engagement and generating a, a public art project. All of the conversations I had with residents were so important to coming up with the concept and then creating a context in which I could come in and execute it. And then in terms of uh, technical skills, um, you know, one thing I learned from the project was that... Um, sometimes it makes sense to collaborate with others. So I mentioned working with Ben Peoples, who was so terrific. And that allowed me to partner with someone who had technical expertise that I didn't have to be able to visualize or bring to life something that I could see in my mind but not quite articulate yet. So that was very exciting for me. And I was really grateful for the generous funding for the project that made it possible for me to do that. It's kind of interesting how Millville is becoming an arts town because it, it's becoming an arts town without giving up its blue-collared roots, which I find kind of interesting because you've got mm -hmm. this... It, it's weird. It's, it's a weird mix, but the two of them aren't competing at any point, and that's one of the things that I find so unique. It seems like a lot of communities, mm -hmm. you seem to have one or the other. You've got this this blue-collared feel to it where sure. they're into their sports and they're into the this and that, and then the arts community comes mm -hmm. in and there's either conflict or one of them leaves. But with Millville, it seems like right. not only are they coexisting, a lot of the blue-collared people who live here are the artists themselves. So you kind of have this weird... Yep. This weird connection. Sure. Yep. Absolutely. And I think that the uh, the borough, the MCDC, I mean, all the folks who are are working on these different initiatives are are clearly very conscious of that and wanting to maintain this mix of old and new and make the community equally appealing and supportive of those different constituencies. I certainly sense that as well. Yeah, and it's weird because they're very open-minded as a community as well. I know with this network, the River's Edge, they've been very embracing of everything that we do, mm -hmm. yet they still mm -hmm. have these these old, beautiful churches here. They still have a lot of the old yes. old elements of the town that, that still exist and aren't going away anytime soon either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So that's going to be a 5.15 tonight at Gap Park. I'm going to excite it. I'm going to be there. I'm going to try and shoot uh, a few pictures or something like that if I can to, to get some oh, of those terrific. up on the, the River's Edge page as well so people can check all of that out if they're not able to come in person. But it's only my hope that those pictures will inspire you to make the drive down to Millvale or, or take the bus or however you get well, here on the bike yes. and check it out in person as well. I hope so. And as I said, it will be up for um, uh, at least a year so people will have the opportunity to come see it uh, at their leisure. Um, so, yeah, so please come down. If not tonight, then another time. Very cool. Anne, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to call in. And that was Anne. Yes. yes and that's the 5 p.m. Gap Park. We've got Anne Tarantino 
on the phone, and you'll be here this evening, correct? So people can come meet you in person? Sounds great. I'll All see right. you soon. Sounds Thanks, good. Brian. Check Ann out tonight, 5 p.m. at Gap Park. Looking forward to that. Sheena, will you be at Gap Park for the, yeah, the public um, uh, reveal? Yeah. Uh, do you know when the tree lighting is? That is going to be right afterwards. I can... Okay. Got that at five. Looks like five twenty-five or five five thirty. So it's going to okay. be right after the unveiling of the the public art display right here at Gap Park. Which really, it's at Gap Park, but it's really all throughout town. And that's one of the cool things, as mm-hmm. we mentioned in that discussion with Anne. It's really all throughout town, but it does kind of come to a head at Gap Park. And then, what's so cool is you can jump over, see Santa, come back, get a drink here. You can go to the Double L. You can go to uh, go down to Salon 22 and, and get a haircut before it all starts. Lots of good stuff. And one thing I thought was kind of interesting, and I, I just thought I would maybe share a little trivia with you here today. Ooh. We've got the schedule here. Thank you. So it is 5.30. The Mondays will be playing. And then Santa's at 6.30. And then 7 p.m., Dale Mangold as well will have his music playing. So, oh, the Philharmonic will be at 2.30 at the New Sun Rising Moose Lodge. Mm-hmm. So lots of really great stuff and lots of stuff at Gap Park as well. There's going to be fire and s'mores, a holiday photo booth, family fun. There's a kid's party that is going from 12, so right around the corner, 12 to 2.30. So there really is something for everyone here. And oh, there's yeah. a, a great list of businesses which you can check out. Well, the library's got stuff going on too. Um, what do you guys have going on? We have children's story time uh, oh, really? at 4 o'clock. Yep, after, um, after the little children's party up the street. Um, kids can, can stop down. Our director Susan's going to be reading Night Before Christmas. Very cool. Um, and yeah, the library is going to be open today from 10 to 5. We have some art and like decorations that the kids can like hang up or color. Um, and, you know, a couple little stocking stuffers. Very cool. So that's one thing I, I love is people really, even like the nonprofit organizations, they do whatever they can to give something mm-hmm. at these events, which is really cool. And I like that. Uh, I believe, is the library part of the Business Association? Pretty sure. <laughs> Pretty sure. Okay. I know they're involved with the MCDC at yeah. some level as well, but it, it is kind of cool. You do get a lot of these nonprofits that are involved with the Business Association. We are involved as members of the River's Edge, and we're, uh, we're proud to be involved with the Business Association of Millville. So if you want to know what all businesses will be taking part in today's Yuletide tour, you can go to the Business Association's Facebook page at BAM, B-A-M 15209. That's at B-A-M 15209. And you can also click the event in the Facebook Live video, which is airing right now on the River's Edge page. And I think I'm going to end today's program with a little bit of trivia. So you know that there were the uh, three wise men that came to Jesus' birth, correct? Mm-hmm. And you, do you remember what gifts they gave? Uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh? You are correct. Do you know why they gave those gifts? Do you know what they represented? Mm-mm. Those apparently were, were items either used or given at funerals. And if you think of the entire story of Jesus Christ through the Bible, it's really a story that leads to his death on the cross. But they were all funeral things. And I just was really mulling it over the other day, thinking of Christmas and thinking of of that story and those gifts. And I thought, you know, it was a different time. But if you really, really are into that kind of thing, I guarantee you the people at Haunt Funeral Home would add that family touch and do whatever they can to make that funeral so traditional. So you definitely, when you're here, you could stop there. Stop here on the Yuletide Tour Nothing says Christmas like planning for the future, and you don't want to leave your loved ones in a difficult situation where they're trying to handle your arrangements. Especially, you know, you never know. Things can happen at any time, and I've known people who have dealt with tragedy during the holidays, and I just would imagine that it would be a much easier, not easier, but a a less stressful situation to deal with if if you've made all of your arrangements and you're prepared. So stop by Han Funeral on your trip today at the Yuletide Tour and check out what they have and make sure that your family is well protected in the future. So that is, uh, I think, about it. What are you excited for most with the Yuletide Tour besides going to the library and and seeing everything that they have there and in the public art display and and everything else? 
Uh, definitely a combination of story time. I love having all the kids like run into the library. They're all so cute. But yeah. also like the potential for good food. Yes, there's amazing yes. food <laughs> all over. And there's some amazing restaurants here as well that are listed on the tour. But again, you can find all that information at BAM15209 on Facebook. We're going to leave you with the song that we started with today. It is from the, uh, the Woohoo Band, and it is a rendition of Jingle Bells that they wrote. So it's a, a Pittsburgh original, and they sent us this song, and it's a, a good time. So we're going to play that right now and kind of get you in the spirit to come on down to Millvale for the Yuletide tour, tour. It is going on all day, so there's plenty of things to do at any time when you come here. You definitely do not want to miss it. This is the Woohoo Band right now. I'm Brian Crawford. Thank you so much for Sheena for coming in as our guest co-host today. I will be back on air tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Back at Mr. Small's, so please, uh, 7 p.m. rather. Please join me 7 p.m. or 10 a.m. on Monday at riversedgepgh.com. Pittsburgh's Voice for local music.